guest today. We're going to be passing around this guest book. So if um, everyone could please sign it. We really appreciate it. So I'll start it from here. Including the members? Mm -hmm. all the guests. We, want, we want all the members. Yeah, we want to know who Just was here. Guest. We want to know Just your guests. presence. Oh. <laughs> if you were here. No. are eating your lunch, I'm going to go ahead and start. And today our theme here is Why Toastmasters? So I will briefly touch on this topic. I decided to attend the first Toastmasters meeting here in this building, and I looked back in my folder, it was May 22nd, 2013. Mm. And be, the reason why I attended, because I saw a flyer on my desk that says, because communication isn't optional. And it said, it really attracted me, it said, Toastmasters will give you confidence to excel at job interviews, give powerful business presentations, effectively teach classes or training sessions, these successful seminars. And I thought, hey, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> so I had done a little public speaking in the past, and I teach some classes at my church, but I really would like to become a better communicator. So since I've been participating in Toastmasters for a year and a half now, I've learned so much. I've learned to try to use less filler words, but I still do, such as ah, and uh, so, but it's becoming, the number is decreasing a bit. And I learned to use hand gestures and body movements, which I didn't do before when I was speaking. I learned to rely less on my notes. And I, and I used to hate impromptu speaking. I just, it's hard for me to speak off the cuff. I just hated it. But after doing table topics for a year and a half, I've kind of gotten used, more used to them now. It's okay if someone asks me to come up and speak for a minute or two. I have a lot more confidence now than I have ever had before. And I know I have a long way to go before I'm able to speak like one of these distinguished Toastmasters in the room today, but I'm glad I'm making strides towards that goal. I was at a wedding a few weekends ago, and the bridesmaid gave a toast, and it was really hard to understand her. The poor girl, she was losing for her voice, so we had trouble hearing her, and her speech was so long that everybody in the room was losing interest except maybe the bride. <laughs> <laughs> Even my friend's 80-year-old parents were sitting at our table. After a while, the 80-year-old father, he motioned like this. <laughs> makes the entire speech. And then the 80-year-old the, the mother would start to almost bang on the glasses with her fork to try to stop this girl from speaking anymore. So, we all joked and we all joked about her toast even after the wedding. So my question to you today is, why Toastmasters? <laughs> well, don't give the toast that everyone makes fun of after the wedding. Instead, I would like for you to be the master of the toast. <laughs> So recently, some of us uh, attended the Toastmaster Leadership Institute that was held on Saturday at Cal State Dominguez. And um, it was a great, great event. And I learned so much. Um, I knew we were part of Toastmasters International, but I didn't realize how big the organization is. Toastmasters, Toastmasters International is celebrating its 90th anniversary this year. And there's clubs all over the world. And on that Saturday morning, there were about 400 people in attendance. And you can just feel the excitement in the air and the optimism. optimism. And it was so good to meet people from all these other clubs and to hear a wonderful keynote speaker. So I had a great time. And so it, it's really my pleasure to be able to introduce to you uh, our District 1 leadership team this morning. And um, it's... Is Marlo coming or he'll come later? He's coming a little later. Okay. He's coming. All right. 
Okay. <coughs> First of all, I'd like to introduce um, the Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training is Ms. Joyce Howard. And next is our Lieutenant Governor of Marketing, Patty Titus, distinguished professor. <laughs> Patty's been in some of our meetings before and we heard her speak. So thank you. welcome back. And also I want to um, introduce our club sponsors, our faithful, loyal sponsors who've been with us since the beginning. And the first one, yes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. And our past um, our past district governor for District 1 is um, Giovanna Dottori. And she's our <laughs> distinguished postmaster. And um, so our club sponsors have been with us since the beginning. They're the ones who, who started this club and have been faithful and um, serving us and helping us all the time. The first one is Monica Alexander, distinguished <laughs> The second one is Teresa Hai. She just stepped out. Oh, she just stepped out. out. Okay. I'll introduce her when she comes back. <coughs> and Andrew Chu, who's distinguished toastmaster. <laughs> And our two club mentors are um, Hua Nguyen, she's a competent communicator, but she's out of town today for business. And then Doug Peel. <laughs> so we're very privileged to have our keynote speaker come share with us today. Her name is Giovanna Dottori. And She's a 15-year member of Mattel Toastmasters and is a past district governor. And during her term, we achieved the honor of selected, select <coughs> distinguished, becoming ninth in the world out of 82 <laughs> districts. Giovanna believes three things led to this, building on the momentum and expertise of previous teams, commitment from the clubs and the leaders, and having a compelling vision that made Toastmasters relevant to the members. She's the recipient of the Toastmasters International Excellence in Leadership Award, the District 1 Roy D. Graham Lifetime Achievement Award, and the District Toastmaster of the Year Award. Wow. Her Toastmaster skills have had a, different, a direct impact on her career. Professionally, Giovanna plays with toys all day long at Mattel. <laughs> what a job. I want to work there. She oversees the sales, marketing, and operations for their retail outlets in the U.S. With over 400,000 visitors annually, she loves the challenge of getting them to purchase one Barbie doll every time they shop. That sounds very nice. <laughs> Under her leadership, the stores have had four years of consecutive sales growth, and one store was named to the best toy store list by Fort Worth Child Magazine. Mm -hmm. For fun, she can be found taking her nephews to Disneyland, <laughs> coordinating game playing parties, and dancing West Coast Swing, where she is the 2002 US Open Advance Strictly Swing Champion. Oh. Uh, whether she's wearing her Toastmasters hat or her Mattel hat, Giovanna's journeys can be tied to a strong work ethic surrounding herself with good people and continuing to choose to take part in opportunities that provide joy, abundance, and accomplishment. Please help me to welcome past District Governor, two-time distinguished Toastmaster, Giovanna Dottori. Hello, hello. Happy Charming Day. Hello. Are you guys excited? Because yes. you have free food or because you're here today? <laughs> oh, thank you for your honesty. Food's always good to bring people in. Well, I am delighted to be here today, and it has been the highlight that I have been waiting for for a long time since Teresa invited me to partake in this opportunity to get to share with you in your Toastmasters journey. And I thought I'd share a quote with you, and I'm wondering if you're going to A, recognize it, and B, know where to find it. 
All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it to you. It says, you train and you grow and you learn and you train some more. In fact, at Northrop Grumman, development never stops. There's too much at stake. You guys heard that before? No, you guys are looking at me deer to have I? <laughs> I'm working here, keep Barbie all day long. I have no idea, right? So, so where did I find that? That is the first paragraph. The first paragraph on your job search page if someone is looking to work here and get a job. Mm -hmm. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't even know it. <laughs> you haven't been lucky. So that's a great point. You guys don't even know what your company is asking and expecting of its employees to be successful here. Right? Your company is saying to the public, it's not enough to have a degree. It's not enough to have all these great certifications. It's not enough to have skills. If you are not constantly reinventing yourself, training, and being on the forefront of your particular industry and your own personal development, you will not be successful here. And that means our company will not be successful in the marketplace. Right? So it is a complete domino effect. And if you look at the job openings, just check them out. Whether you're looking for a new job or not, I won't tell anybody. Uh, but just go ahead and look at them, because there's one thing that I found to be pretty consistent regardless of the job that was posted. What do you think that skill is? Communication. You must have the ability to communicate. Effective communication skills. Excellent communication skills. Ability to communicate with people across the organization, with vendors, up the ladder, down the ladder, across the ladder. That is one thing that's absolutely consistent. And so when Helen gave this amazing opening speech, was she not fabulous today in her role of president? Was that not an inspiring message? And she talked about what inspired her to get involved. Toastmasters is absolutely in alignment with your career. And I promise you, in my 15 years of being in Toastmasters, Everything that I've learned here and opportunities I've taken, I have translated into my professional life and even in how I am a great aunt with my nephew and learning how to communicate with him as well. <laughs> the benefits, the opportunities are endless if you choose them. And it is your choice. Every single day it is a choice to continue developing yourself versus choosing to go do something else. Right? Mm -hmm. So I thought I would give you my top four, and I don't know if they're my top four, but they're the four that always come to mind. Um, when I think about the opportunities that I had in Toastmasters and what I got to do in my corporate life. Okay, and one is about timing and respect. One is about breaking barriers. The other is about leadership. And the last one is about courage and connecting. Right? Pretty compelling. You guys probably can all relate to that in some way, shape, or form. Right? Just say yes and I'll believe it. <laughs> all right, so here we go. So uh, timing, and, timing and respect. You guys see that we do a lot of timing in Toastmasters, right? We time our speeches, we got our table topics, everything is timed in Toastmasters. It's a little annoying, right? But in life, think about it. Everything is on a time schedule. At Mattel, we are a little notorious for not being on time with our presentations. <laughs> but you didn't hear it from me, I will deny it if you say it. <laughs> I cannot confirm or deny. So here I get the opportunity to speak on the agenda at one of our global supply chain operation updates. We have over 100 and some people in our presentation theater and people on the satellite feed. And I am the last person to speak on a two-hour agenda, <laughs> given seven to ten minutes to speak. And every single person who spoke in front of me was somewhere much higher in the organization, let's just say. All right, they're all directors and above, and we'll leave it at that. And almost every single person who went ahead of me went well over their time. And within ten, with ten minutes left of the meeting, and I had seven to ten minutes to speak, uh, I had no time. I was introduced, I'm mic'd, and my senior vice president, several levels ahead of me, above me, said, you can do this in um, like five minutes, right? More like three. I had a seven to ten minute speech with slides prepared, people. I now have to make it three minutes, and I'm not kidding. And so here was an opportunity for me to shine and figure out how am I not going to create more anxiety because people know we are going to be out at three and we still have one more presenter that we have to sit through with PowerPoint slides. So that is where your table topic skills really come into play. Your ability to think on your feet and your ability to truly, when you're working on your projects and it says four to six minutes, let's work on the four to six minutes. 
because that day I got to shine because I gave my speech in three and a half minutes while those other people with a much higher paycheck could not stay within their seven to ten minutes. <laughs> so it really put me in a great spot with not only everyone in that room, but also in my boss's eyes. So that's a little bit about time and respect. Respect people's time that they've given you, and they will respect you. Now I might go over. <laughs> yeah, so, so second, uh, we talk about breaking barriers, how Toastmasters help me break barriers. So in my role, it's a very male-dominated field. Most of the leaders are men. In fact, I was the only direct report to a vice president that was female, that was much younger than the rest of the guys, led a group that not many people care about, and the boss called me kiddo. <laughs> he had kids my age. And to top things off, he was one of the best speakers in the entire global supply chain, and no one ever wanted to speak after Bill was on the, on the agenda. Right? So I did. I made the classic mistake of what? Downplaying my Toastmasters involvement. Downplaying some of my presentation skills, because I never wanted to try and steal the spotlight from him. Not that that's what I was trying to do, but that's how it could be interpreted. So one day we were at our distribution center and we were hosting a major high level executive tour through the back through the plant over there. And he wanted to do a dry run with everybody. And as we went from station to station, he literally started providing feedback to these people who don't give presentations on a regular basis and were about to deliver it in an hour. I'm like, what fixes are they going to make? They're paranoid right now. But the greatest moment was simply that when he got a call to go to the front office and we were not done with our dry run, he turned to me in front of 20-something people and said, Giovanna, please take over and provide the feedback. Mm -hmm. And I knew that finally he had respected me for my skills and recognized it and recognized it in front of the whole team. And no more did he call me kiddo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, powerful moment that everything that we learn here can absolutely be translated into our corporate life right and you never know where it's going to show up you really really don't so that's a little bit about breaking some barriers so next we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, leadership right we talked about timing and respect we talked about breaking some barriers so let's talk about leadership one of the things that was absolutely missing on my resume was leading people in a paid environment right I had opportunities to lead in volunteer world but not where someone was actually relying on me, truly, <laughs> to lead to some goals and bring in some profit into the company. Developing people, being responsible for, for people's careers. The other piece that was missing was retail. I didn't have that retail piece. I worked in a corporate office my entire career life. So I really honed the skills in Toastmasters, taking on various club leadership roles, or working through my CL manual, and taking on roles like that Joyce has. I actually skipped your role, Patty. <laughs> and then taking on the district governor role, which is the equivalent of running a company. It's a CEO position. You're responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of each of 150 clubs, their club officers and all the members, to ensure that Toastmasters is relevant to them. And so when the opportunity came up to run the retail stores at Mattel, my boss came to me. It's not something I went to him for. But he had seen the change, he had seen some of the activities and things that I was doing within our department and within Toastmasters that he felt confident that I had the potential to lead the stores. And like I said, I've never had retail experience. <laughs> that was something that I had to learn. And that was the same year I was elected district governor. So I was doing two full-time jobs at the same time. Was I scared as hell? Yes, I don't like disappointing people. I am a high achiever, right? I came in here, my energy is off the charts, they had to shut the door. Right? So, was I nervous? Yes. But did I really rely on my Toastmasters support team to help me get there with all the tools that we've done, all the opportunities? Absolutely. And I am very proud to say that after a little over four years of being with the group, it is the first time in their history that they've had four consecutive years in increased net sales profitability, and we've had the most promotions and cross-training opportunities in my organization than they've ever had in the whole history of 20-something years of those toy stores. Mm -hmm. And that is the piece that I am proud of the most. And it's directly as a result of the things that I've learned in Toastmasters, and not just by showing up, and not just by being a casual Toastmaster. I am a firm believer, if you volunteer to do X, you do X. Do not give me Y. 
because every single thing that you do, every single thing for the grammarian in the room, uh, is an audition. I can't tell you how many Toastmasters will ping me and say, there's a job opening. Can you tell me who the hiring manager is when you pass on my resume? <laughs> and I get to sit there and go, am I going to put my name on the line for you? <laughs> All right. What do I know about you? Because this may be my only interaction with you. And if I don't see you living up to the potential that I'm going to go put my name on the line for corporate, I'm going to say, why don't you just go ahead and apply online through the web-based thing? Right? Because am I really going to go to bat for you? This is the only interaction that I have. So that was a little bit about leadership and how I was able to, to climb a little bit up the corporate ladder and do some retail stuff. Some fun things in the toy store. I don't know if you guys know, by the way, this is my shameless plug. You get a discount as a corporate partner every time you shop. 25%. You know? Are you a shopper? Yes, I've been there. Good answer. You could have just told me that's not what it is. That's my shameless plug. All right, so, so our last one um, is about connecting and courage. And it's probably my second favorite story, actually, um, that I've gotten to experience in Toastmasters. Can I ask, Monica, where are we all in timing real fast? I don't mm, see the lights. Where um, are oh, are you doing lights? 11.45. Okay, perfect. So I'm ahead, because you guys can see that I'm a super fast talker. So maybe I'll throw in another story. <laughs> so this is about connecting and courage. And it's something that I never, ever imagined having the opportunity to do when I first joined Toastmasters. I was not on track for that. So when I was club president for the first time, it was about 2001, and we had a new CEO at the time, Bob Ecker. And we decided that we were going to have a club uh, executive speaker series, hosting different executives every other month, and using it as a club membership building opportunity. We would open it up to the company, be in the presentation theater, do all these fun things. And being that he was the new CEO, who better than to have kick off the speaker series, right? So I sent an email to him, and with great fear, I hit the send button, because you have no idea what they're going to say. Here's a new guy. Here's, I'm a peon in the organization. Is he even going to respond? And within 15 minutes, he responded and said, absolutely, book some time on my calendar. So in that moment, I went from being, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. This is so amazing. I'm going to meet with the CEO. We're going to plug Toastmasters, do all this great stuff for the career. And then I went, holy cow, what am I going to say? I can't go up there and talk to him. He's going to do this. It's not going to be the time of day. Why am I doing this? I'm going to send someone else. <laughs> it was a whole gamut of emotions, let me tell you, that ran in those 30 seconds while I'm sitting at my desk. So I really, really relied heavily on my Toastmaster mentors to help me craft what that agenda was, help me to calm down and really understand his speaking style and his communication style and respect his time. And so I was ready for the meeting. I was ready. And I walked in there, and he was all casual. He had his feet up on the desk. He's like, <laughs> back, that stereotypical image, you know, that you see in, in those Dilbert comics. <laughs> and I was sitting across from him, and we're having great conversation. I've got my, head, my pen in my hand, and we're talking. And my pen gets thoroughly tangled up in my hair. <laughs> and all I could think of was my mentor saying, you talk with your pen, put your pen down. I did not heed her advice in that moment, and there is a pen stuck in my hair. So now I am literally like a robot going, uh-huh, uh-huh, <laughs> waiting for the moment when he looks down at his paper or somewhere else so I can yank that pen right out of my hair. <laughs> I don't know if he ever saw it, but if he did, he certainly was respectful and professional enough to never tell me that he saw it. But where that led to was the CEO, who remembered my day, name from that day forward, and he was with the company a little over 10 years after that, always talked to me in the hallway, always talked to me in the elevator, called me by name, talked to me about Toastmasters, talked to me how the role was going. When I was elected district governor, I asked him, if he would be the keynote speaker at our installation and awards banquet where we do it in front of the whole district. And he said, absolutely. And I was more afraid of that moment that he would say no for some reason that was more scary than asking him to be the speaker at our kickoff. But he said, yes, book some time on my calendar. And what was precious about that moment was when my boss's boss found out, the same guy who told me do this in three minutes, he said, uh, how'd you get him to come and do that? that I asked him. And it was that moment where it's the deer in the headlight and the dog where they go, huh? Like, that was it? You just asked him? <laughs> and he looked at me and he goes, you know that's his golf day. He's taking off his golf day to come and do this. That's mm -hmm. And all I could say was, what can I say? I don't know what it is. <laughs> right? Carrie's taking the golf day off. <laughs> 
But so it was, it was a pretty powerful moment that I got to spend the day with him there. He spent the whole day. He didn't just come and give his presentation and leave. We sat there and we chit-chatted, swapped ideas on how to best prepare for a speech, what his tips were and things that he learned about leadership over the course of the day. And it was an amazing experience until he retired about three years ago. And even when he comes back to the company, he still checks out for me. So it was something I never thought I was on track for or that would happen, but you never know the possibilities that could happen just because you are here today. So now I have my red card and I got a little excited about because that's one of my favorite stories. But maybe one day I'll come back and tell you how I got to represent the company and give a speech to 200 plus CHP officers and I had almost a whole room in tears because I got to work the number 10 manual and a speech in your manual inspired your audience. It was pretty powerful. So everything you learn here today and moving forward in Toastmasters, it's a choice. And take your quote that your own company tells you that you need to succeed and take it to heart because this is what they're looking for. I'm not telling you this. Toastmasters is just your vehicle if that's what you want to do here at North of Common. And I promise it's going to be an amazing, amazing journey. Madam President. Schedule to come speak to us. We'd like to present you with a certificate of appreciation. Here, let me help you. Do it in the front so we can see your face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Someone take two pictures. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, she's going to go post all of Facebook. She's going to be PR. Trust me, work it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A very inspirational speech to help us learn more about your journey through Toastmasters and how it really uh, helped you professionally and, and also personally. Uh, as I mentioned before, our, um, our this club started meeting officially on May 22nd, 2013. And since that time, we've been working hard to, to um, become a charter club. In order to be a charter club, you need to have 20 members. So, so it took us a little while, but we got there. So in October of last year, 2014, we, we were chartered as a club. And our name is Toasting Toastmasters. The MG is in capital letters, standing for Northrop Grumman. That's how the name came about, Toasting Toastmasters. So right now, we're going to have our chartering ceremony. And um, do I invite up Joyce? Oh, Patty? OK. Patty will be uh, presenting the pre presenting the certificates to the members. Greetings, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. It's my pleasure to be here today to charter this club. You struggled valiantly to make sure that you had your 20 members, and once you got them, you're off and running. And I applaud your perseverance because many clubs fold but with the help of your mentors and the very invested Toastmasters they're not lukewarm Toastmasters because they just kept going and by the time they actually charred I think two people already had their CC's and had done their 10 speeches so it's a wonderful testament I'm glad that you were impressed by the TLI and we look forward to many of you becoming more involved in the district and becoming district officers so we'll talk about that later. But before we go into the charting ceremony, I'd like to invite my Lieutenant Governor of Education and Training, who has come here to bring you greetings. Let's welcome Distinguished Toastmaster Joyce Howard. Hi, I bring your greetings. <laughs> Have ever, has anybody ever thought about what makes a great Toastmaster Club? You haven't thought about that, did you? So why are you here? To do what? To communicate. <laughs> Communication is the whole key. And that's what makes a club great. How did you like, how do you guys like your club now? I like it. You like it. How does it feel? Good. It was comfortable. What was the first thing that you thought of when you walked in the door? What was the first thing you thought of when you walked in the store? Were you scared? Yeah. Right? Yeah. You're scared? <laughs> Correct. But were you greeted friendly? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. People were smiling? Mm -hmm. here, are people here encouraging? Yes. yes. Is it an environment that you would want to make you learn more? Yes. Is it, do you feel safe? Yes. That's what clubs are all about. 
make you feel safe, make you want to learn. Now, I don't know if everybody knows everybody in here, but I'm sure you'll get a chance to meet everybody. But once you get that feel of, of trust, you know, you can take all of the things that you would like to do on the outside world, bring them in here, test them out, and then bring them back out. And then you'll be wonderful. So that's what you're here for, right? Mm -hmm. To learn, to grow, and to take whatever that you learn to the outside world and to then build up to make a better person. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So with Patty doing now, as my lieutenant governor of marketing, she was here to make sure that this club is going to go and keep going strong. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Right. And I'm here to educate you to make sure that you take go to the next level. And right now, as a charter member of a club, you are the very first person, very first person to become part of a wonderful club. So clap! make sure that I welcome you all in. So, Patty. Thank you. Okay. Just want to give you a little bit more background details on Toastmasters so you know exactly what you're getting into. You heard Helen say that we're 90 years old this year, and we're actually going to be celebrating the 90th anniversary of the entire year. So you'll see wow. some other incentives and some other celebrations for the 90th year, because this runs from October of last year. October of this year. So we're going to celebrate 90 years of Toastmasters. So we have over 14,500 clubs. So you are one of tens of thousands of clubs. That's <laughs> awesome. So right now, we have over 350,000 members. So you are a part of a global organization represented in 126 <coughs> countries. And we have over 90 districts. We have about 94, 95 districts all throughout the entire world. If you go on vacation, I urge you to look for a Toastmasters Club where you're going. Because going to a Toastmasters Club in some other location is a life-changing experience. Because you get there, you have a group full of friends that you didn't even know you had, and they're following the exact same format and it just makes you feel connected. There are more things that connect us than separate us. And one way of finding that out is through Toastmasters. Lastly, make it a point to come to the International Convention in Las Vegas in August. Mm -hmm. If you thought the TLI was exciting, <laughs> going to the International Convention, and because Las Vegas is the number one tourist attraction in the world, people are going to be there. In Malaysia, which was our first time we went off the continent of the United States to have an international convention, double the number of people came to that conference. But I'm sure we're going to double it again because we're going to be in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> so please put that on your calendar. Your president will get that information too. It's mid-August. I think it's the 14th through the 17th. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to call the charter members up first and have you come forward. Take our hand, we're going to get your certificate, we're going to stand between Joyce and I, we're going to take your photograph, and then you'll, you'll have your seat. Do all the regular members, then I'll do the sponsors, then I'll do the mentors, and then at the end I'm going to have the president and Teresa come forward to receive the charge certificates and the charge gifts. I'm going to be doing this in alphabetical order. Philip Balthazar. Oh, he just walked in. He had to leave. Oh. Just walked in. Oh. 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 had to leave, too? She just left. Sharonda has to leave. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. 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 This person is on. No, it's possible here. Okay, Dennis Leon? Oh, she's on. No. No. Kyle's here. Kyle's No, Kyle's on work travel. They do that every meeting. Mark Labrad. Yeah! One, two, three. Ready? Toastmasters. <laughs> gotcha. Nancy <laughs> Miguel? Yeah! yeah. Gotcha. Irma <laughs> <laughs> Muratala. Gotcha. 
you. <laughs> Atia Reed Brown. Ooh, Atia. <laughs> Mary Jane Sahagan. Yes. gets a sponsor certificate in addition to his charter member certificate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our <coughs> club mentor and charter member, distinguished Toastmaster Monica Alexander. <laughs> gets the charter certificate as well as the mentor certificate. But every club gets it, assigned by our executive director, Daniel Rex, chief executive officer, and also by our international president, Mohammed Murad. And it says, Toasting, Toastmasters International certifies that toasting, and they actually have the capital N-G. They, they can't do that on the banner. The banner is all capitalized, but otherwise they acknowledge that's how you spell your name of El Segundo, California, has been elected to membership and is hereby vested with all the rights and privileges of Toastmasters International as prescribed in the Constitution thereof, and by the acceptance of this charter, has agreed to abide by said Constitution, in witness whereof the said corporation has caused this charter to be signed by its Chief Executive Officer and International President, and on your charter date, which is October 30th, 2014. So congratulations, and I urge you to always have an anniversary celebration open house to commemorate 
this wonderful occasion. So let's All present right. that to the President. Thank you. Thank you. And then we always like to give goodies. <laughs> it is full of gifts to your club. And as marketing, I get to pick all these wonderful things. And I like to shop, and it's better when it's other people's money. So you get, you get a lot of things since I help this club get on track. So this is something, just a fun gift. So this is three colors, timing lights. And you might want to pull this out. We have, a, we have a, an open house or something, just instead of the regular cards. Yeah. Or if you have a special meeting, just kind of fun. Here's a, here's a table talk, so when you have table topics and you may want to think of some funny questions, that's the whole list pack of questions. I give you a CC manual, so if you have a new member, you may want to give this to them, and then when theirs come, they can replenish the club, and it's an extra one for your club to have, or someone might forget it, and then you just have one they can look at it. Pack of ballots, you always need extra ballots. So we get that to you. <laughs> the like, I can't hold all this. I can't put it back in the bag. <laughs> uh, word of the day. Ooh. Oh, sorry, Matt. <laughs> Club ribbon pack. This has five different types of ribbons. First timers, welcome, best speaker, best evaluator, best table topic. So you may want to have a special meeting and get all the ribbons. I know you probably get two table topics, right? Well, Another guest yeah, book when you, because you're oh. going to have so many guests, you're going to fill up the guest book you have. <laughs> Always good to have another one. And an advanced manual, which is technical presentation, since you're kind of in that techie industry, you may want to have that for someone. And then lastly, some additional sort of. promotional sort of. materials. So when you have your member or guest packet here, some things, clear communication, your organization needs it. And then, because communication is an optional, you I know you've had these in the past. So it's just, just, to, just to welcome you to District 1 with some <coughs> additional things to help your club stay on the right track. So this is your bag with our beautiful logo for this Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll share the show to our president, Helen Lowe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. On to the portion where we'll have the um, induction of officers, and I'd like to invite up Cynthia Moore, our Area A5 Governor. Hello, I am so excited about your new club, Toasting Toastmasters. You guys have worked so hard to get your club charter and we're excited about it in District 1. Now I'd like to install the officers. I'd like all of the officers to come up and stand in front of us, starting from Sergeant of Arms and the President is at the end. So we'll have the Sergeant of Arms here. And then we'll have the Secretary. And the treasurer is out as well. Okay. Can someone stand in for the officers who are not here? Martin. Martin. <laughs> Martin and Matt. Do you want to stand No, you come on, because I'm an officer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sergeant of Arms, treasurer, secretary, yes. <laughs> VP of Public Relations. VP of Membership, VP of Education, and the President. <laughs> I am here to install the offices of Toasting Toastmasters today. And to prepare, to prepare you for the challenges of uh, that will lie ahead of you. The collective challenge is to make the club strong, dedicated to helping people from all walks of life to speak in an effective manner, listen with sensitivity, and think creatively. 
I will ask each officer to hold. You have your gavel. I will ask each one to hold the gavel, starting with the sergeant of arms. And this is a symbol of your leadership. As sergeant of arms, will you meet all of your responsibilities that you have read about and been trained to do? Do you pledge to meet all of your responsibilities as Sergeant Bond? I do. Okay. And you can pass the gavel next to the stand-in, or are you the... I'm the stand-in. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Pass the stand-in to the secretary. Do you pledge <laughs> to... Uh, as treasurer. Do you pledge to hold up all the responsibilities that you learned about in your duties as treasurer. Okay. And you can pass it to the secretary. As secretary. Do you pledge to hold up to all of your responsibilities as secretary of Toastings Toastmasters? Okay, thank you. Can you pass it on to the VP of Public Relations? As you have been trained as the VP of Public Relations, do you pledge to hold up all your responsibilities for your club as VP of Public Relations? Yes, I do. Can you pass it to the VP of Membership? As VP of Membership, do you pledge to hold all, up to all your responsibilities that you have been trained to do for your club? I do. You can pass it on to the VP of Education, SVP of Education. You know you have a lot of responsibilities, and I know you've been trained well. You have great leadership here. And do you pledge to uphold your responsibilities as VP of Education? I do. And you can pass it on to the President. executive officer and are expected to preside over all club meetings and at all regular and special meetings of your executive committee. It is your challenge to see that the club enables its members to achieve their educational goals. It's also your challenge to see that your club helps the area, division, district, and Toastmasters International to meet their goals. Please accept the gavel, as you have, as a symbol, symbol of your leadership and dedication to the office. The gavel is a symbol of the power and authority given to you by the membership of this club. Use it wisely and with restraint. You are the member of your team as well as a leader. A team is more than a collection of people it's an emotional force rooted in the feelings, thoughts, and actions of all members with a common goal of achievement, sharing, and mutual support. Work with your team members to create a healthy, dynamic club, a club of which everyone is proud. With you as president, accept the challenge and perform your duties to the best of your abilities. I do. <laughs> it's now my pleasure to declare these Toastmasters installed into the offices to which they have been elected. Stand. <laughs> 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 and the 
development of Toastmasters <laughs> program and club hostings. Toastmaster depends larger, largely upon the actions of this group. On your honor, as men and women of Toastings Toastmasters, do you pledge to individually and collectively stand by this club, live with it, and work with it throughout the coming year? I do. I do. Okay. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Take one step toward it to you. Take, okay. You can't see your faces, yeah. Okay, good. So on three, I'm going to take three, okay? One, two, three. One, two, three. Smile, please. One, two, three. Okay, very nice. And what next do you want to take? Uh, the, the district leadership team come on. Come on. Yeah. With us. Yes. Join us. Okay. Yeah. And remember, these are historical pictures that you're taking. You're not going to put them in your drawer. <laughs> Keep them. You guys can pull some a little bit. Pretend like you like each other, it's almost over. Ready? One, two, Okay. Thank you. Okay. And everyone, and then everyone, and then everyone yes. Come, come, come on out. Yes. Yes. I'll take it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, yeah. Johanna, get in there. Um, <laughs> the time the to the come join us. <laughs> 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 you will be a member of this. It's just temporary. We're in the Sydney, Australia. How long? For about four and a half months. That's true. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a true story. That's nice. I know. Right, so uh, so uh, everyone needs to get super close, tight in. I don't think like even closer, like closer, closer, closer. I think it's the ones on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be under time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you can see it. All right. So I'm going to go right in between you. It's going to do something, I don't know what, but we have 10 seconds. Okay. Okay? Ready to run and run Oh. Make sure you can see the camera. Yeah. 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 Okay, one more. Yeah, it worked. You. All right. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Okay. Got one more. Yeah. 
we can do it again. Uh, you guys want another one? Okay. All right, get as close as you can. Okay, ready? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah. I just want to say for those who are visitors today, please come back next week and we'll have a regular agenda meeting. And we have we have um C Irma for um information for application. Yeah, thank you everyone for coming today. All right. And if you have to sign the guest book, please sign the guest book. We just want to um, thank you, everyone, for coming to our chartering ceremony open house today. Thank you. All right. The meeting is adjourned. Very good. <laughs>